tout d'abord, d'abord, sera d'abord propre. D'abord propre, of intermediate value. C'est d'abord Now, all that the gospel property is saying is very simple. It's saying that if only we have a function, and we are saying that the function is continuous on this closed interval, all right, then, or it's continuous on this open interval, then what it means is that there will be exactly a value between it, all right? There will be a value between it. What we are saying is that that is when we do the substitution of the interval into the function we are going to get a real value and when we get a real value that means that the double property has been satisfied that is all that is all that is all you see so that is that when you do the substitution when you play this in the function of f of x it gives you a value of a when you place b into the function of f of x, it gives you the value of b. That means that there is a certain value which is between this, there is a certain real value which is between this and this. And that is what? The constant k. Alright? So, the problem is that you don't need to worry. If the interval gives a real value, that means that the double property is established. So, if f of x is continuous on a closed interval of a, b, and k, f of k is between f of a and f of b, then the double property is established. And if it's established, this is saying that f of c a will, be, will be equal to the constant of one of k. Very good. So, let's look at our first example. Show that, show that this function, show that this cubic equation that we have has a solution in the open interval of this. Has a solution in the open interval of this. So the first thing to do, the first thing to do is to write that in terms of this. So we put that because f of x. Then the open interval a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2. Alright, so f of s is equal to a, both x. f of s will be equal to 1. And when you do that substitution, all right. So let's see if it's going to give us a real value. So when you do the substitution, the first one will give you negative 3, the second one will give you 6. Now please watch. It doesn't matter when the f of a is equal to b. It's, that is not the concept. If we get a real value, whether negative values or positive values, we don't care. All that we are carrying is giving us a value. That means that there is a certain value between this. And that is f of c, which is equal to a k. And that is what we are talking about. So, since f of a and f of b, so let's conclude. Since f of 1 and f of 2 gives rare values, gives rare values, then then f of s is continuous. It's continuous on one, two. One, two. Therefore, we say that then go and say this. All right. When you search that, search that, 
is right such that f of s naught such that such that f of s naught is equal to k and that means that f of s naught will be equal to z so that establish the Rolex theorem. You can show it. You can show it with a diagram. You can use a diagram to show this. All right. You can use a diagram to show this. Let me give very small. Let me give one. Let me give two. Let me give three. Let me give four. Then here one. The interval is one and two, so let me indicate with one and two. Then there will be an existing value here, right? And that is what F naught. So we can see clearly that Compelling for you to show the graph. I'm just using it to explain something to you. So what we are saying is that we are saying that you can see there is an existing value that will be we have that place to be negative three and negative and six. Negative three and six. So what we are saying is that there will be an existing value here, right? So that value will be at what f naught that will be at f naught and that is what the double property is projecting to us let's try on the second one and i would like you to pause the video and do that on your own so the question the second question Show that, show that, has at least two zeros, has Alright, so now let's prove, let's take our proof from Dabor's property. Let's take our proof from Dabor's Dabor's Uh, from the boss property, and you know how to go about it. Start, start, start with it, start with it. When you put S to be equal to, that is the S to be equal to negative 3, what will you get? 2, what will you get? So, if, when you do it correctly, this gives negative 11. This gives negative level. And you know what that means? That means that it is adjusted at the point negative 3, negative level. And this 2 will give negative 1. And that will give 2, negative 1. 
All right, that is at the point two negative one. Okay, what else I need? So now, since we are real values here, we can conclude that f of x is continuous. It's continuous on on this closed interval. It's continuous on this closed one interval. Then you can continue with it to show the diagram. You can continue with it to show the diagram. Let's show a diagram and indicate this point. That is all. The diagram is not anything. Just show the diagram and indicate that point. So we have negative two. We have negative two. So the point that is where is to negative three. Negative three, negative eleven. I can assume it to be less than here with negative six, negative nine, negative four. Alright. So that will be somewhere here. So this will be that point. Negative three, negative eleven. Then the second one will be at Two negative one, two negative one. So that will be somewhere here. Two negative one. All right. Then you know that this is a cubic function, and that goes like this, right? A, a, a quadratic will go like this, or like this, but a cubic will go like this. So very good. So now go with that. All right, so that is what you are going to get from that. Then you conclude. Then you conclude. How you can conclude it? Then you conclude. All right, so since we are getting real values, then we can conclude that the function has at least two solutions in the interval of negative three. Thank you and see you in the next video. Now, what are we at all going to do in the next video? Wow, I would like to introduce to you and then we move on. So, in the next video, we are going to look at hey, what is it? Oh, <laughs> in the next video, all right, we are going to look at yeah. That is the interesting part. That is definition of limit. Definition of limit by hand. Please, this is not hand. Hand is a This is by hand. Hand is spelled this way. By hand. Definition of limit by hand. All right. So we will be looking at interesting examples and all that, and some definitions and all that. Very good. So. That is that. Then right after that, then we move on to, to the Lebanese theorem of the N derivative. So before that, see you in the next video to talk about the definition of limit by hand.